This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. music down a little bit here it's a little bit on the loud side and uh i'm here and it's uh, time now for the ramble the ramble goes until midnight tonight uh eastern daylight time midnight tonight so you know and uh um uh, over there over there there she is hi Huh? Hi. Just say hi again. Hello. 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 How are you? Good. Good, yeah? good, good. Really? Our weekend guest hasn't arrived yet. She yeah. was supposed to come in today. Yeah. We're having our mini high school reunion this weekend, but um, she's coming from Ohio. Yeah. And they were stormed out. Yeah. <laughs> so she's coming in early tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So that's that. That's so I, my update. So I get my my. Uh, you get a room for one more night. My 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 place to watch TV. Yes. Where I usually watch TV. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, yeah. So so that was uh, sad because you were. Yeah, I was expecting her. You went out and bought steaks for dinner tonight, so well, we had them. So we had them. You know, we had them, and uh, that's it. Well, that's all I've got to say. That's all I have to okay, say. Okay. Well, good night. Good night. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, I got to. Uh, I got to check something out here. I, gotta, I always have to see. I'm doing a show, and I'm also at the same time, besides doing a show, uh, you're the I, board man, huh? You're the board. I'm man. the board man. Then I'm really bored. Anyway, <laughs> so it's the second week without the kitty. Yeah. That, she sends us kitty updates. Yeah, she sends us kitty pictures to make us feel like really sad, horrible, and sad, and <laughs> and and uh, yeah. Uh, no, but uh, the uh, you know what I decided about the kitty. We found out it was two, it's two years old, so right. she's still a kitten. Right. If she were like eight, we probably wouldn't have fallen as much you in love with her. You don't know that. You don't know. You know it's her personality. Because at that point, they just get long in the tooth. No, she has a personality. You know, you, you know why why kittens are so cute. So Same they, way, but why babies are so no, cute. No, it's nature, so they won't uh, they won't get killed. Same way with babies. Really? Yeah, that's why they have big eyes. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. Sometimes they cry on the subway, and I'd like to kill them. <laughs> there was a kid that came in with his mother on the bus the other day, and the kid had a whistle. And she was letting him go berserk, and we were all just crazy. Then he picks up something and throws it, and it lands on me. <laughs> and did the mother say, I'm sorry? Nothing. 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 I See, mean, the he, kid was totally running her life. He was the adult in the room. You know, here's the problem that I have, okay, is that people are rude, you know, and they don't really have manners anymore. Right. Now, is it, is it because I'm getting to be an old fart and I'm no. going, oh, these kids today, they don't have no, any No, they should be, they, 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 should, they should know what their boundaries are. They're, they have no limits. So the child was totally, and the child couldn't have been more than well, what two we, or three. What we really hate on the subway is when a kid, say, five, four years old, is taking up a seat. Absolutely. And he got and, him and for free. And there are no free. other seats available on, on, on the train, Right. And he got in for free. Little enough to ride for free. Little yeah, enough to ride on my knee. knee. Yes, exactly. And they and and so here's the little kids there, you know. And you're sitting there. I mean, I've got. I've and you got, got a, a family of four kids, you, and they're got blocking bad, up. You've yeah. got a bad back. I've got a bad knee. Now I'm, you know, I'm thinking of doing an experiment. Uh, and I, I thought of this yesterday as I was taking the subway home because a very nice lady did something for me, and I felt bad for her. And I'll tell you why I felt bad for her. I mentioned this yesterday on the show. Uh, there was an there was a woman who took a seat that was empty and sat down. All right, and then there was a seat right next to it. So I tried to sit down, but she was so fat. Oh, you didn't say you tried to sit down. I you tried didn't. to sit down, and she was so fat. How fat was she? So How fat, fat was she? So fat that if she wore a red, white, and blue dress and stood on a street corner, they'd try to shove mail in her mouth. That's how fat oh. she was. Okay. Anyway. 
so she was so uh, so uh, she was fat, and I couldn't wedge in. So I just got up, and she said, "Oh no." And she got up and let me sit. Was back. that an age thing, you think, out of respect well, for an age? Well, uh, I would hope so at this point. <laughs> you know, I'd like my age to get me something. When I know. broke my arm and I was if in If I a, can't get a job with my age, at least let me get a seat. See, when I know. broke my arm and I was in a cast, the only one that gave me a seat on the subway was a pregnant woman. Really? She got out of her seat and gave it to me. I mean, I was in pain. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's terrible. It, it, no, it is. It is kind of terrible if you think about it. Uh, but anyway, so I was that. That was kind of nice. It was the first time I ever had anybody offer me a seat. But it was after I had tried, it. and then I felt bad because she she knows she's fat, and because I couldn't squeeze in there, she knew she was really fat. Well, she was taking up two slots. I saw a guy taking up three slots today. Really? Yes, three. He was so fat. How fat was he? He was so fat that when he <laughs> sat around the house, he really sat around the house. <laughs> he sat on the house. <laughs> now he took up three Here's seats. Here's the one I always love. This is what I call my, my, my joke killer. My wife's so fat. How fat is she? So fat that the doctor said that if she doesn't lose weight soon, she may have diabetes and die. See? That's my joke killer. It is a killer. Yeah. You know, you just, <laughs> rather than, because there's nothing funny about being fat, you know? No. I'll tell you, I don't want to be a, a, a... You don't want to be fat again. No, I don't want to be one of these people who, who says you can do it. Well, but it's when like I people see, that stop cigarettes. When I see a fat person, uh, I go, you know, you can lose it. You really can. Uh, now, uh, some people, I think, have a propensity towards being fat. Uh, and to ask them to get thin is like asking them to, I don't know, you know, sometimes they can't do it. But I, on, on normal people who are just overweight because they just let themselves go, I go, you know, I did it and I did it very pleasurably. I had, I didn't deny myself any good food. I was eating steaks and in the morning I was having eggs and bacon. That's about and, when I stopped cooking. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, well, I couldn't cook anything. Yeah. That I like. Yeah. And now, now here's the funny part about it. So I go on this low carb diet, right? No carbs, right? Zero carb. <laughs> really just really for a year and maybe two months took me to lose the 60 pounds. A little more than, a little less than 60 pounds, about 58, something like that. Anyway, uh, I lose this weight and uh, she, of course, is is kind of dieting with me because when I when we have something to eat and order stuff, it's going to be stuff that the I same. can eat, right? You know, and you you kind of cooked for me and for my taste and, and so on. Boring. And, well, no, well, no, no. Well, the you. carbs aren't the carbs. Well, not, I mean, no I carbs got, is not boring. If I never see another salmon with basil, okay, butter, I'll be very here, happy. Here, here, here is yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that okay. So forget that. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I've learned that you can, you know, there's sugar-free Hershey's Stuff. chocolate yeah. out there. And there's sugar-free uh, pudding. Pudding. And uh, sugar-free uh, this and that. And then, and sugar's what you got to worry about. And then like yesterday, uh, I had some ravioli. We, I went down to Italy and got some ravioli, and that's the treat I give myself every now and then. And did I gain any weight off of it? Not really. You know, I think I weighed a half a pound more today, and that's only because I didn't take a dump. You know, uh, but I mean, so, uh, but what I'm saying is, is that people who want to lose weight can do it, you know, and it, it, it's healthier for you and it's a thing you should be doing. You know, it's like my doctor said to me, I said to him, I, gee, I lost 60 pounds. That's good. I, hey, but your cholesterol is really high, which I figured now, I figured out why. I think there was one month I didn't take my cholesterol pill. Could be. And that was probably the month they did the checkup on me. But he said to me, he said, we got to get the cholesterol down. He says, uh, he said, but I'm eating, you know, I'm eating all this fat and fattening food and stuff, fat food with fat in it because it has cholesterol. And he said, well, you know, you got to get that cholesterol down. I said, do you want me to gain the weight back? He said, keep going like you're going. <laughs> You know, because I mean, weight, it, it, weight, as I read it, can cause a lot of problems, and it's not just physically on walking and things like that. But I mean, it, it if you get diabetes, well, it affects it, your, if, a lot of your organs. 
It affects your organs. It, it affects uh, what was I looking at? I was looking at something. I was looking at something like pan, uh, pancreatic, not pancreatic cancer, but uh, uh, what do you call it? Cancer, Passive. esophageal cancer. Because I think I have everything that anybody I know who's died of something has, right? Help uh, me, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so so I uh, <laughs> I um, uh, was looking that up. And one of the things it says can cause esophageal cancer is being overweight. Being overweight, I would say, is probably just as cancer producing as smoking cigarettes. So, I don't know. Anyway. So I quit cigarettes and I, and I quit eating. I, don't, I, I can't tell you, I've never, I haven't had, uh, outside of those fake chocolates, out, out of the no sugar chocolates, I've had no chocolate, I've had no pies, no cakes. All the things I miss. When I go to the, uh, you know, the, those, uh, the, the, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, diners, and they have the those wheel pies. of pies going around, you know. Uh, With the meringue that's like that high. I, I'm, I'm saying to myself, I'm really missing something probably. But then if I had it, it might not be as good as it looked, because did you ever notice those pies weren't, didn't necessarily taste as good as they looked, you know. But because they were going around and around and around as you walk, and it's always as you walk in the door. It's like, yeah, don't forget this, you know. So anyway, so how was your week? Good. It's only a four-day week, and I have another four-day week next week. Yeah, because so you ta you take taking them Friday and Monday well, because we don't take that many vacations, and she. You know. I don't take any vacation. Well, we got to do one. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, for like two weeks, this place can get along without me. These guys can do this show and post them and do all of that. Exactly. Because you know? I haven't taken a vacation in, what, four years? Well, uh, same. We haven't taken a vacation. Would you get closer to your mic? We haven't taken a vacation since we got married. What? Think about it. Wait a minute. Weren't we, we married when we went to China? No. We weren't? No. We got married in 11. Oh, and we were in China in 10. 10 or 9. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we better take a vacation. Yeah, when? Because I would hate to, like, uh, tomorrow find out I have some dread disease that's going to kill me and I well, didn't take a vacation. Well, that's what I keep telling you, and you're the ones dragging your ass. Well, I wish I knew when I was going to die, then I could spend my money appropriately. If I knew I only had a year to live, we'd be taking trips everywhere. We'd be taking a world tour, for crying out. You know? Well, that's why you should give yourself a date like I have. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> check, check this one out, folks. She's she's got it. She tell. I think it, it's it, January fifteenth, two thousand twenty-three. Thank you very much, Larry, Larry Bubbles, Bubbles Brown. Bubbles Brown, explain this to people. Well, he was on the show, and he's telling Alex that he went online and found this thing where you answer a few questions and you find out when you're going to die. So as they're talking, I went on the line, I filled out everything, and I found out that I'm going to die uh, January 15th, or January 20th, 2023. And you know something? The way this world is going right now, that's not a bad idea. I mean, I'm still like healthy enough and, you know, go out while I'm on top. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, all I know is I have a lot of things wrong with me now. I have six years left. I have a torn meniscus. <laughs> I have six years left. You heard about my torn meniscus? Every day. A torn meniscus. Every day. I have, I think, a hernia. Every day. Um, my feet are numb sometimes. How about your esophageal cancer? Well, I, I'm just imagining that. That's no, that's not, real. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, you know. I, 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 I did tell my wife, ex-wife, should say X Y. Which one, Ronnie? Uh, that I that I wanted to thank her for coming down with pancreatic cancer, and she said, "Why?" And I said, "Because you know me." I said, "I'm a hypochondriac." No and I shit. said, "When you got this, I just felt that anything I might have is just so not not important or unimportant that you know that uh, that you you made me realize that." Uh, Maybe I should be happy that he I'm healthy. He eats pasta for the first time in a long time, and then for the next 10 hours. Do you think I gain weight? Do you think I put some weight on? What do you think? How many carbs in all that pasta? I eat? Do you think I put on weight? You're giving, None. You're giving the stop. You're giving the people out there the impression. I'm giving them the truth. The impression. <laughs> 
that I'm very difficult to live with. Yeah, well, I would say. Then why are you living with I me? I don't know. Why are you still married to I, me? I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. Why haven't you left me? <laughs> you want me to? Have you considered leaving me? <laughs> no. But you already because have your you, you have your bachelor apartment if, if, designed if, if, already. If, if you're thinking of leaving me, why can't you leave now? No, I, I'll let you leave. Oh, okay. Then I, then I can go. You know what I can do? There's this place. It's called Bob's Furniture. What well, we have is, is bachelor apartment already well, decorated. Well, they advertise about every five minutes on uh, on on whatever you're watching. On whatever you're watching on the news and so on, and uh, uh, it, it's Bob and he's bow legged. Do you ever notice he's bow legged? And he talks about his furniture and it's uh, Bob's discount. El cheapo furniture. furniture. And there's one right where we shop at Costco. He there. likes the decliners that have the space to put your drink well, in. You, but you you pay you pay an extra four dollars for a movie so you can get a seat like yeah, that. Yeah, but then I'd leave it there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. But You eh. wanna get it? Get all the furniture you want for your bachelor apartment. I'll help you decorate. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All As right. you walk out the door. Uh, so anyway, so uh, that will be my my no, gift so, to so, you. So so I I keep joking that hey boy I like that that lounger that Barca lounger it's thing yours. they got. Oh, and that uh, dining room table he's selling for thirty dollars. I like it's that. It's yours. You know Bob's discount furniture. We're gonna decorate his bachelor apartment yeah. in under a hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, <laughs> going to Bob's discount furniture. Do you know if we, we you know you've never thought about this? We should go up to, since we go to Costco and it's there. We should go to Bob's Discount Furniture mm -hmm. because they give you a free ice cream cone. Well, you get that at Stu Leonard's. You yeah, know, but you have to spend a hundred dollars at Stu Leonard's well, before nothing. they give you a free ice cream. That's nothing. No, but you got to spend a hundred dollars at Stu Leonard's before they give you a hundred. Yeah, but they would pay me a hundred dollars to walk into that place. <laughs> yeah, but but free ice cream. You go, you go. Free My ice pleasure. cream at you, Bob's Discount you Furniture. You spend your afternoons at I love, Bob's Discount I love Furniture. love Bob's Discount Furniture. I, I love his ads, you know. And by the way, you know, for everybody can... that calls into Alex's show yeah. and complains that Trump doesn't do anything, the, the executive branch can initiate legislation and send it to Congress. They she do knows, it she all knows the because she was... Because I wrote legislation for the Justice Department. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so they, they write it, they send it up, and, and then it gets worked on. So he's just sitting there. You bring me a bill. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Lazy just son a of a bitch. And he's taking a month off. <laughs> After all no, these. No, no, he's taking 17 days. 17 days. That's work days. <laughs> no, se no, 17 days. That's work days. Is it work days? Yeah, so that's, that's like over Well, three for him, he only works one day a week. <laughs> right, so, so that's two months. That's 17 months. <laughs> uh, no, uh, um,. Yeah, he's taking a vacation already, and uh, just as it was, does that mean we're not going to have any interesting stories about Trump? Oh, I'm sure we'll hear something from the, the golf course. Yeah, he goes out to New Jersey to the golf course, and now, uh, of course, the uh, Secret Service has gu been guarding uh, that uh, Trump, Trump Tower, Tower. Uh, which has been costing us $200,000 a day in New York. I, I don't know how much of that the government pays and how much of that New York pays, but a there lot. are a lot of New York cops around there, and you, you're right near there. I'm a block away. So you see the congestion and everything that he's caused. Uh, they they threw them out of Trump Tower, did they? No. Or they can't afford to be in Trump Tower? No, both. But first of all, <laughs> Trump was charging them for the offices that they put him in in Trump Tower to guard them. He was charging them rent. Well... I don't know that that's not proper because, you know, that's... No discount, no, I'm sure. No, but that's real estate he could be renting out to somebody oh, else. Give me a break. Who would want to have an apartment in that building right now anyway because of all the security you have to go through just to get to your apartment? Oh, and those apartments aren't cheap, you know. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I think there's a separate entrance for the it's apartments. It's a back entrance. Back entrance for the apartments. But anyway... So uh, they had to they had to put a trailer outside. Is that it? Like a like a, a house trailer, for them to work out of out in front of Trump Tower. Well, I've had that for for over a year now. Which I love the idea of that because then it makes Trump Tower look like a trailer camp. It does. And then across the street they have like a a, a station. Really? Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch. 
and they've blocked off streets in certain directions. You can't go down them, and it's it's horrible. It's just horrible. I say, and the if, fact that Tiffany's is part of that building. I mean, it, it just low rents every I store. I will right bet there. you, if this keeps going on, Tiffany's will close that store. I don't they think so. Been, That's their flagship they, store. They've been in that location since, uh, well, at least since Breakfast at Tiffany's. Well, the <laughs> turn know. of the century, I think. Turn yeah. of the century. Yeah. Um, and, but and and. and they are having a hard time business All the stores. Yeah. Now you're, what, a block? Well, you're I'm two, on Madison. You're Madison, so you're... One block over. One block. And over. two blocks down. Two blocks down, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's what happens when you make Trump president. Boy, this yeah. is... Uh, a lot of people are a lot of his base are starting to have doubts. Not the base yet. No. I wish. No, I I saw them interviewing the base on uh, some show. Yeah, but they still support him. I wish he would stop tweeting, but I still like him. Well, <laughs> you know? well I wish he wouldn't tweet. I wish he wouldn't do this. I but wish... I still support him. Yeah, the fact that he called the president of Mexico and asked him to help build the wall because it was a campaign promise he made and he would look <laughs> bad if he didn't. And Mexico said, I ain't paying for that <laughs> fucking wall. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and, but he thought he could, he literally begged with him, would you please do it? It was very funny. It very is funny. funny. I think it's time for me to roll on over. No, it isn't. Are you tired of talking to me? <laughs> Here, I can just take the camera off of you, you know? I can take the camera off of you and just put it on me. And then if you're tired of talking to me, then I, you know. Then I'm I'll rolling just do over. This. I don't want you rolling oh, over. Oh, sorry. But what are you rolling over for? We're not, it's not time. Oh, well, okay, I'll get rid of this. <laughs> and I'll bring up the, uh, the uh, um, this thing. Hold on a second. Let me take this and move this up here. Uh, there we go. Uh, and, I, uh, you know, there's little things I have to do in order to get this thing already sure. okay and then what i will do is i will turn on the uh, skype lines so that the first person calling will probably be mike because uh, uh, what down. How come no no the, the, no these 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 names those names don't mean anything oh. they don't mean anything i don't i have no idea what they mean is that the, our Brian? Huh? Wait, would is you talk into the mic? Well, it's all the way over there. Well, why don't you come on over here so, so you can talk into the mic? Mm -hmm. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that cute? Two, two old people it? kissing. Now everybody can vomit. Oh, wait a minute. See, I told you Mike would be the first person to call. See, Mike is the first person to call. Why are you the? Oh, why are you always the uh, Mike? Turn on your turn on your camera, Mike. M Mike. Here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There, there, he, there he is. He's always the first worst, worst, worst person to call. Wait hey, a minute. Scott. But Scott Boddicker is calling too, so we'll add him to the group. Scott, is your wife away? Uh, 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 hi, hi, Scott. How are you? Now, let's see here. Here, Rob. here comes Rob. There, here comes Rob. There we go. Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. How are you this evening? I'm good. Happy Friday. I'm so glad it's Friday. You, you're so glad it's Friday. Right? Me too. I took a day off. Yeah. I played hooky. So anyway, Hi. Yeah. Hi. Rob, I'm going to be sending you a private email. Would on, you talk into the on mic? On one passport. I have some questions. Passcode. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. I just want you to expect it soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is that it? That's it. That's it. That's my public okay. announcement. He did. He did. He did bid, she did. Did bidneth right here. Hello, Business. Scott. How bid. how how hot is it in Texas? It is. You so know, hot. I was going to tell Rob. He should have came down to August this week because uh, we had a we had some record low temperatures for highs almost. I think. What what are they? Well, uh, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday it, they hit a high of eighty. Really? Wow, that would be so nice. Yeah, it was like 17, 18 degrees below normal. It was yeah. it was beautiful. And it's and it's been cool. I mean, it's been cooler. You know, it's only been in the low 90s, but you know, for August in Texas, it's it's very pleasant. Yeah. Well, hopefully it'll hold out. It, how's how's the humidity down there right now? It's 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 low. It's it's around, you know, 35, 40%. Is that going is that typical? Uh 
well, I shouldn't say that because it did rain here today again. But yeah, it, it, it usually it's around you know below fifty, definitely. But the weather the weather I've seen everywhere is number one rain, a lot of places, and and hot, well, really Paul, hot. Paul I mean, California is unreasonably hot. Yes, it's all Phil's fault. Uh, the Bay Area was very, or the, at least the East Bay today, was very overcast and muggy, what we call earthquake weather. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, we had a uh, fire in the Oakland Hills no uh, uh, yesterday, uh, well, the day before yesterday, and uh, uh, no uh, homes were impacted, but 20 acres burned. What's so earthquake So it was reminiscent weather? of what happened. Yeah, well, yeah, what's yeah. earthquake weather? Earthquake re- weather, weather. W- weather is a myth. It's a complete and utter myth. I'm waiting for it to no, start. Phil, is, well, yeah. is that that's, that's very true what you said about earthquake weather? It seems to be uh, a correlation between like warm and muggy and earthquake. Yes, uh, it's been muggy up here in Sacramento. Well, I'm trying to remember so, when we had the Loma Piet, you know, Prieta quake that I was involved in the middle of. Uh, I don't know if it was that warm and muggy. Yeah, I was at the Giant game. It's a very it gets very still. And uh, it's you know, just, hours it's, it, before. It's imaginary. There's no such thing as hurricane weather. Earthquake. Earthquake, earthquake weather. There is, hur- <laughs> there is hurricane there is weather. There is hurricane <laughs> weather. <laughs> <laughs> That's it right now. Starting now. Started today. God, did I fuck up on that one. Well, my girlfriend's plane was canceled because of all the storms in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. know, it's it's it, it. The weather has not been good. Of course, it's it has nothing to do with global warming, as we know. Yeah, not not, not, not a thing. You know, the Secondly. weather we've had like the hottest. What is it? The hottest weather every year. It breaks the record on, on record. Yeah, every year it gets hotter. It yeah. breaks the record. Yeah. But there's no global no, warming. There's no, no global trend. warming. There's no trend there. There's no, no trend. Uh, there's, you know. Uh, oh, by it. the way, they say that by the year by the year 2100, two thirds of all of England. Will die as the result of global warming. Well, that's out okay. of the from their food. Well, they say once the bees are gone, you have three sure. years left to live. How many? Four. Four after the bees are gone. After the bees are gone. So okay. put down those and ins- disappear. <laughs> what? The bees are disappearing. Yeah. In, well, they uh, have uh, in, in the Bay Area. It's what's called it's oh, everywhere. worldwide. It's called hive. Yeah. It's called hive collapse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're, they, they, for some reason, they're, we're having trouble with the bees. And if the bees go, we're dead. Four years. We're dead. Because nothing will get pollinated. That's right. Right. Hey, Except, we're all dead. We just don't know it yet. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you for the wise and happy suggestion. <laughs> so, so, Scott, the weather has been actually unseasonably cool where you are. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, I when I jump in the pool, it's actually chilly. You know, it's not like, you know, bath water. We're getting that weather tomorrow here. It's going to be like 70 degrees, 71. Uh, so it's moving east. I saw a Facebook post from Patrick today, and he said that it was 61 in uh, Wisconsin. Wow. And, you know, I mean, it's, this is August. Yeah. I heard that New York's supposed to get rained. Tomorrow. Within 24, 48 hours, yeah, they tomorrow, said. Yeah, tomorrow, because we're going to the theater, of course. Yeah. You're going to the theater yeah. tomorrow? I see. Okay. Right now in Walnut Creek, it's 81. And, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Oh, wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me add, let me add another person to the group. Oh, Patrick? guess who it is? Hey. Dr. Hey. Blazer. It's Pat. Here comes Pat. Patrick. See, we have a theme song now for you, Pat. Drick, Patrick. Patrick. And with that, I'm going to say good night, everyone. Oh, okay. I'm calling it an what? early night. You talk into the mic so they can hear you. It's an early night. You can stay later. I'm tired. Next time. Next a, week. No, she's always tired. Yeah, sure. She'll stay up for the I'll whole show. Up, she'll I'll stay up till up midnight. I'll stay up 11 next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good Bye. Good night. night. Bye. Good night. Wave bye bye to her. Bye bye. I'm go. wearing clothes. Uh, yeah. I'm wearing my Friday night clothes. I'm wearing your Friday night clothes. Okay. Anyway, so um, uh, uh, you know, uh, was supposedly the weather's been getting unseasonably uh, 
it's just been it's been changing there is a change in the weather uh, but what the hell anybody watching anything good on TV hello I saw the last episode of uh, the comedy thing uh, the, you know the last the eight, episode eight episode eight of what uh, oh, that, oh, oh uh, that Showtime comedy thing yeah yeah uh, I'm, I'm dying up here yeah yeah they, they, I think there are two more episodes before yeah. it's over I've been we were watching the last tycoon uh, and you know eh, nothing much to watch on TV well that's it for the show tonight thanks for joining me all right see um, because there's no, there's absolutely nothing to talk about even 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 on the Trump side it was a little quiet today wasn't it yeah, I think so. It's boring. I'm going to miss him when he's gone. Yeah. It's like... I wonder if he's going to take his phone. I, I realize I do really like reality TV. Because that's what, we're, you know, I, I've gotten addicted. Because that's really what our government has become, is, uh, is, yeah. is reality I'm, TV. Yeah. I'm loving it. Like uh, I, Every day I go, gee, what am I going to see on there now? Yeah, well, last night we had a very it's great. A very, it's a very, real. We had a good question. We were passing around the panel, yeah. and we have two people here who weren't on the panel last night. So maybe we could get an answer from them because what I said was, is that what I find is that between my show and Jack, well, I was listening to Jack's show and going, they're always Trump bashing. And then I thought about our show, and I thought, you know, we're Trump bashing all the time too. So I decided last night to ask the panel, each member of the panel, to come up with something good about Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, it, 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 some people were having a hard time. I think the best thing anybody came up with was the Woolman Rink, right? That he paid to get the Woolman Rink in Central Park fixed, and he didn't put his name on it. So, you know, he did let everybody know it was him doing it, but, you know... Um, it was okay. So I would ask Scott that question. Can you say something good about Donald Trump? Well, we, I listened to the show today because I, we were entertaining guests last night. I couldn't call in, but but uh, but uh, I thought of two things. So I don't know which one. Should, should, can I almost have to do no, one? No, you can, can go one? with two. If you want to go two, then double down and let's praise Donald Trump. I thought one, one, one of the good things is he's not our fattest president. <laughs> okay, I think wasn't Taft the fattest? Yeah, William no. Taft was the fattest. No, it was uh, Teddy Roosevelt. No, no, Taft no. Was no the I think it was Taft. 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 Taft came in at about three hundred and fifty pounds or something. Three, three forty. I looked Teddy, it up. Yeah. Teddy Roosevelt was was rotund. He was he was stocky, but he was not that fat. Fat, you know. But but I thought that was kind of a backhanded comment. So I thought, well, well that's not really a good thing, maybe. Well, but uh, the other one I thought was really good is that he has a really good taste in his new girlfriend. It, 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 you mean malaria? No, no, no. His, his young one, his new girl. Ivanka. <laughs> oh, no, if, no, no. It's a, it's a real. It's a. It's a not 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 a relative. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now you're you're you're, you're yeah, talking about foil. something that none of us uh, that I'm not aware of. What 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 is this? Gar Garfoyle. She was being associated with Scaramucci. Uh, the, you know the uh, the gal okay. who, no. No. who was uh, the ex-wife of the San Francisco mayor. Oh no 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 no! This this one's a 28. She's never been married. She's the she's the some director of the in the communications department. She, she's really hot. He's got good taste. R really? So look it up. Well, now, where, okay. well, well, where did you hear about this? Where did this? It's all over the internet. Where did this ugly rumor start it's itself? Oh, uh, uh, Politico. Uh, Politico. dot com has a good, ar nice article on, on it, and and uh, but there's a, what was it? The Untouchable Hope Hicks. She's untouchable because she's you know, connected. She's what? She's connected. Oh, connected. To I the see. Oh, I. See. Oh yeah, she's. Well, that's a yeah, good she's thing, because uh, at least that'll get him impeached, like it did. Uh, all the other oh, shit yeah. he does, you know, he can't get impeached for, but well, he can get impeached for this. <laughs> Who is this woman, well, and you, why in the world you know, would she... She's not an intern. She's actually a paid staffer. She makes like 180000 a year, so she's one of the higher-paid uh, 
staff people. And that's just because every time Donald fucks her, she charges. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, now no, look her up. She, she's real so, cute. So this, pick. wait a minute. So this is this is what this is not fact yet, is it? Or it's conjecture, isn't it? Well, as much other facts as there are out there about uh, you know uh, Clinton and his girlfriends, I guess. But you know, which proved out to be true, right? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. absolutely correct. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So. No. All right. So but she's good looking. She's very good looking. She looks like a, a very young uh, Melania. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But um, um, with real boob, maybe I don't I know. Can't I can't imagine it, you know anybody wanting to fuck him. You know, yeah. I mean, it, are attracted, it, yeah. some women are just attracted to power. And, and yeah. well, I uh, uh, there was a reporter out of Washington that I used to have on my show. Remember, they had the this. Um, team and uh, on 60 minutes it used to do point counterpoint and i'm trying to remember yes. what his name was but i yeah. had him on my show and uh, after uh, and he kind of alluded to the fact that there are women in washington he didn't use the word he used bleep or whatever who they refer to as power fuckers and these people these women are like gr political groupies and they call them power fuckers and uh, they're, they're running around Washington like crazy. I'm sure Mitch McConnell has a groupie, you know? I mean, well, I know, Patrick, give it that face. I agree with you. I mean, but then again, I'll give you another face. There's, Donald Trump's got to have a groupie. You know, can you imagine that? Yeah. What about, like, you had groupies, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but I, you did? yeah, I, I you even had stalkers. White oh, stalkers, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, but it, let me ask you a question though: Are they stalkers if they're good looking, or are they just women uh -huh. you'd fuck and they came on to you? Yeah. It, it, well, you see, how do you define a stalker? Does, it, it, if she's really good looking, is she a stalker? You know, Raquel Welsh, uh, when she was, uh, you know, much younger, uh, mm -hmm. after three months, even if you were married to her, you get tired of her. You can you could be going with the most beautiful girl in the world, and it just it gets gets old, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter what they look like. You need some strange. Yeah. You need some strange. Thank you very much, Rob. A technical term. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. could use some more callers, by the way, this evening. We'll probably get more, but uh, you just use Skype, or you can call us uh, using the phone number. And if you want any of that information on how to call us, how to be part of the Citizens Panel, uh, just go over to gabnet.net, and we have a whole primer over there on the right-hand side of the page. It'll tell you all the ways you can call us. It has a phone number. Has the has a well, If you have Skype on, you turn your Skype on, and then you just click uh, the button that says Call there. And uh, it will automatically dial you and get you into us. So that's how you become part of the citizens panel. Anyway, anyway. So, um, yeah. I, Has anybody seen the, the president show on Comedy Central? I watched it once, but I wasn't that happy with it. Did you see the guy who played Scaramucci? No. <laughs> it looks just like him. Oh, really? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's, if you if you look at face uh, Facebook, if you look at YouTube and and uh, and Google uh, the president show, he's been on one or two times, and it's pretty funny. It looks just like him. Let me ask you a question though. Uh, uh, do you feel sorry for Scaramucci on any level? No. 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 <laughs> no. Uh, well, maybe, no. a little, maybe a little bit, I do. Well, I, why? I, yeah, I, 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 it, it, why, Scott? What, 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 what's that little bit? I don't know. He just, he, he was just so in love with Trump, and Trump, you know, just cut him loose yeah. like that. Yeah, he was Trump's weasel. You do that to someone you love, that loves you that much. Well, he was, he was a, uh, a liberal just before that. I mean, this guy is like a chameleon. He's a but phony motherfuckers. Just, just, just trying to get power. Oh, well, uh, okay, Pat weasel. Patrick. He fits with Trump. Trump was a Democrat before he ran for president. 
and Scaramucci the same thing. So I think Scott oh. may actually have a point there that if if they were butt fucking each other before and now Donald yeah, being rejected by your lover, that's well, it is kind, isn't it? Kind of a rejection by a lover, isn't that how it how it kind of plays out and feels? You know, most Republicans from New York are Democrats. You know, it was Nelson Rockefeller. Uh, you know, all, that that whole group of them. They they were. No, but, but, you know, but they, they but, might have worn a R. Ro- on no, their, but Rockefeller. Uh, no, Rockefeller was not legally or physically a a Democrat. He was a Republican, uh, and but back in those days, there was a group of people known as liberal Republicans. Right. You know, and um, uh, M- M- McCain was one of those. McCain was always considered a liberal Republican, uh, and it's possible. You know, there are certain, um, there were certain uh, reasons why, you know, uh, definitions of the Republican Party that those people filled, but they also were very liberal on a lot of things. They call them rhinos? Well, what it it was is they were fiscally, they were conservative, and uh, socially, they're liberal. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then the party became Bible thumpers, and that's why most of them the are party, gone. your party, Phil, got hijacked, and that's the problem. I didn't get invited to the party. You know, well, nobody uh, likes to invite you. Well, to they the didn't like you. That's why. Now of we course. now we did. Wait a minute. There's one person here we didn't talk to, and that's Patrick. He wasn't here last night. Something no, good about Donald Trump. You're not getting away with this. Um. Well. Uh, number one, I like Mattis as Secretary of Defense, yeah. and I like Masters as uh, National Security Advisor. I think you need military people who have actually been in war, who have experience, to give actual uh, advice regarding national security and things of that nature, rather than a philosopher out of Harvard or something like that who's going to, you know, they're going to quote different books and shit like that. I mean, uh, Matt, um, Mattis and uh, McMaster, they've, they've cut their teeth uh, in the Gulf and uh, through different uh, commands. I, what, I think it was a great pick. What's interesting about uh, people like Mattis and, and just generally generals and so on in the military is that traditionally I found that they're more anti-war than the people who are in Congress or senators who go, oh, we got to go fight that fight and do this because they know what war does to people. They've seen it firsthand. And it was Eisenhower who, who uh, always said that he hated war. He hated the idea of going to war and that he was very conservative about that. And I think that's what's good probably about Mattis is he's, he's not one of these knee-jerk generals who says, I need a war. Yes, Patrick. Definitely one I point differently would be uh, a clockwork orange. In what respect? The, the Air Force general. Uh, oh. I forget. Oh, you, mean, you mean Dr. Strangelove? Oh. Yeah. The, the yeah. guy played, um, uh, who, uh, who was the, uh, Le, Anti, uh, Le, LeVay, not LeVay, uh, LeMay. Yeah. Uh, uh, general LeMay was, I think, the character that they based uh, that on the, the Doctor Strange love thing. But yeah, you're right, Alex. That and that that part of it. I mean, if they've been in it, they know what the results are, and they know what it's like to order. You know, um, they understand the costs. Well, I believe it was General Lee who said, um, you know, it, it to be a true leader, you have. <laughs> to order the death of the thing that you love the most and that would be people your you know your army and that and that's the way you command that you have to know what the cost is and you have to weigh that out and I, I think you've got two people there that they know what that is they, they've led people in the battle they've ordered yeah, so so that that's why I think those are two great picks and two things that I can say about them. 
Well, what do you he, think about? He, okay, but wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me uh, let me bring this up to you, uh, Patrick. That you're saying that's a good thing about Trump, and yet, story has it that he had a meeting with those self same generals and and so on and admirals and and uh, had a meeting and read them the riot act on Afghanistan and told them that he wanted the guy who was in charge of Afghanistan to be fired. And so for a guy who you say has hired people who know what they're doing, he's not letting them do what they know how to do. Well, then they'll, re they'll resign if, if that's the case. But the fact is he hired them. So, you know, I mean, that, that speaks to at least people around him maybe told him these are the people you want. But he fights with everybody. I mean, he that's the thing. Find me one person in the White House that he hasn't had some, I mean, crazy going against his own uh, attorney general uh, openly in public chastising him. Who the fuck does that? I mean, you don't do that in a business, uh, you know, in a workplace. You don't chastise employees in front of other employees or in front of your customers. You take them in the office, you talk to them separately. Exactly. So I don't think that holds any water. Um, he does that with everybody, and he, he well, doesn't you like. Know, you know, you know something. I it, it, people, you know, people go, oh, you know, Donald Trump was a successful businessman. Fact is, Donald Trump wasn't a very successful businessman. In fact, truth be known, I think one of the reasons he doesn't want to give up his tax results. And the reason he doesn't want an investigation into his finances is everybody would find out what a lousy fucking businessman he was, in, in fact. Uh, he's gone bankrupt how many times and so on. And I think part of it has to do with the fact that his management style sucks. Well, didn't he go broke about four or five times and then get it back again and lose it again? Yeah, but that, that's not uncommon in a lot of uh, in a lot of cases with business people. Um, but the question is, if he ever got it back, you know, uh, it, it, the the question is, how rich exactly was he, and and uh, how much are those properties that he have his name on it are owned by other people, not to, not the least of all Russians, okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's a big question about his ability to run a company and his management style, and apparently that's come to become a problem in the White House. Well, he, isn't he selling Key Lago or something like that? I think he's selling that. Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago? No, no yeah. I haven't heard that, no. I thought, I, thought, I, I thought I saw that that was up for sale for some reason. I, have you, anybody heard that? No. 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 But but what about his, you know, we all know that he was a troubled kid and his father put him in military school. And that's where he, you know, sort of grew up. But isn't it kind of interesting that he's bringing all these military people in the positions in the White House, like his new chief of staff? It's like he's he needs that kind of military uh, discipline. discipline around him to try to get him even he maybe he realizes that's maybe the only way he can wrangle himself. My uh, manager at the store was a master chief, spent eight years in the submarine. And I tell you something, if I had my choice of hiring some millennial uh, with a college education or hiring the guy that's been working for me for several years who uh, has a military background, I take the military guy every time. Uh, he's organized. He's, uh, he, he, you know, if you tell him to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning, he's there at 7.30. Uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, he's the most dependable person I've ever had work for me. Uh, and uh, his desk is always neat. I mean, if you look at my desk, it looks like a bomb went okay, off. Okay, well, maybe we'll get you some Vietnam vets in there who uh, whose brains I, are I, a little I, jumbled I, and let them see how they work out for you. Uh, so I, having I, worked in this D.C. area, I run across I run across a lot of ex-military here, and I find most of them are full of themselves, and they... Nice. Hold on, let me finish. And they do not listen to anybody else's opinion, and in IT, that is a bad thing. Uh, you, you get a guy that gets to the point of Master Chief, 
and it's it's a whole different person. It's a guy that can control. He doesn't give a shit about people. anything. The guy, we 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 got a new CIO at a company that I worked. He was he he sat in a room with us in a conference room with about eighty IT people that he managed. You know his staff around him, and he said, "You know what? I don't give a damn about anything. I've been shot at. So I don't really give a damn." about anything it's my way or the highway well i got news for you most and of these i was like you know what kind of attitude they're they're phony and uh they 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 they're more full of themselves and they got a bunch of stories but they're half of their stories are bullshit and you get the real guy and the real guy doesn't say a word he just does it well i and, and then the, the then i had a manager who was ex what, what is that high end uh the the the, the guys that, like, you know, go in the secret missions, what the hell are they called? SEALs. SEALs, Navy SEAL. This guy was a Navy SEAL. He was one of the most okay. unethical people I ever met. Completely political, politically incorrect in the workplace. He wound up, the company wound up getting sued, like, twice, and he eventually got fired for it. But these are two high-end military people who I've worked with in management who have I who have had who've had their finger on my career fuck them yeah. just because wait, wait, people wait. are good at blowing shit up doesn't necessarily mean that they're leaders okay well, and, there you uh, go well, uh, but a master chief is oh. Rob, yeah. Rob's probably talking about officers and 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 Phil's talking about a non-commissioned officer yeah. NCO right okay let well, me Patrick's had his hand up for a while here one of the things I'll say, and my, my grandpa told me this many years ago, is that anybody who's actually been in combat and has actually been shot at and wounded or whatever, likely will never talk about it or will talk about it at a minimum. And my grandpa never opened up about anything about his military service until he was well into his 80s, and he died when he was 90. And one of the things that pisses me off, and I see this every now and again, and they'll parade him on the news, like the seal that supposedly killed Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a code of ethics among the special operations groups that you don't talk about any missions or what you did. And some of these guys, and you're right, Rob, there are there are people out there that are basically attention holders, and once they get mustered out or they retire, they don't know how to deal with things outside of a military structure, and then they start right now. This seal very well may have been involved in all sorts of missions, and I mean I have a tremendous amount of respect for that, but when they start going on the news and saying. Well, I'm the one that killed Osama bin Laden. I don't believe him. Because anybody with any scruple wouldn't do that. Patrick, there's, there's an ethical thing. I killed Osama bin Laden. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But that, well, that's the point. I can only I can only speak from experience in that I've had I've been, I've been in two jobs where two people were brought in to a management level, one at the highest level, which is a CIO, and one at a middle management layer. And I watched both of those companies' morale, entire work experience, everything change within three months of these people getting there. And I, so that's my experience with these people who supposedly were so decorated and this and that. They're so full of themselves. That everything goes out the window except what they believe and what they think. And especially in IT. IT, it got to a point where you had you people were afraid to give their opinions. And that's what you do. When you're in a meeting in IT, you're talking about a project, you're talking about a thing, whatever it is. Everybody is giving their opinion about it because you're trying to flush these things out. It got to the point where people were afraid to give their opinion because of ridicule. You get ridiculed. These guys, they think he, he puts people in half Nelsons and full Nelsons and, and, and he made everybody go to lunch at the same time every day. You had to go to lunch. I went there. This Luckily, this guy was in Denver and I was in 
I was here in Virginia, so my boss was in Denver. But we had to go visit him. Mm -hmm. I went there, and you had to go drinking the first day. Everybody got drunk. I don't really drink anymore. Everybody got drunk. The next morning, if I had been home, I wouldn't have gone to the office. That's how sick I was. So I show up around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. My stomach is in my throat. 11.30 comes, and that's when everybody goes to lunch. And he's saying, he's everybody gets up. They're like robots. They all get up and walk. And I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here at my desk. I sat at my desk, and from the rest of the time, he was calling me non, Mr. Non-Esprit Decor. And I'm like, first of all, I didn't even know what the fuck that meant. Yeah. And then when I, and then I finally had to say to him, "Enough, yeah, stop it." He would. I, I watched him berate everybody around him. If you were Asian, he would make fun of your accent. I oh. mean, I mean, this guy was. No. A, he you know, was a mess. I understand what you're saying, Rob. It's just, and there are people like that. But it's it's rare that they really reach high levels. Uh, you know, I, you had two guys that were in high level positions that were assholes. Now, uh, I have met a number of very very high powered people, C CEOs and so forth, and I always notice that they're the most humble, quiet. Uh, Typically, they are even even healed and even tempered. These are the guys that reach that level. Those other guys may aspire to it, may reach it temporarily, but they're not going to stay there. And uh, and well, I'm, they I'm don't. I'm talking there. about my experience with these folks. Um, you know, now. one for about two years and one for about three months because he the the CIO dude. We me and my partner the, I was the senior engineer and he was the uh, infrastructure uh, designer and the two of us were put in play we were we were tasked with putting in a new storage solution and a new backup solution for the company and we went out and we did all this research we had use cases we had facts and figures the CIO wanted to go one specific way and neither one of us agreed with it and we told them so we said look we disagree I have it all on paper here showing exactly why we, we disagree. Well, we wouldn't agree. I got to a point where I said to my, my pal, I said, you know what? Why don't we just fucking do what he wants and he'll get off our back? And he said, no way. He said, I'm not signing off on it. So we went to him and we said, you know what? Look, why don't we end this right now? You want to do this. Let's do it. And he said, no, I want you to go out and do your reporting. He wanted us to sign off that we agreed that this was the best way to go. Neither one of us would do it because of our reputations. He wrote us both up. We got both written up and had th put on a, pro a, I had never in my life been treated like this. We got put on a 90 day probation and were, would have been fired. I got a job immediately and left. The other guy said, nah, they're not gonna fire us. He called me one day while I was on my new job and he said, dude, they just walked me to the curb. I said, I told you. You had 90 days. They weren't telling you what they were. I asked them. I said, I want to know what the what's the plan? What's the measurable here? Why? What am I? You know, they wouldn't tell me anything. I said, they, dude, they want so you the, fired. So what you're saying so, is, is that he was applying his military experience to no. the way he was being a management. CIO he, had a buddy who was selling whatever it was that he and wanted. That's to sell. exactly right. He was in the back pocket of the vendor. Yeah. He was in the back pocket of the vendor, but that's. That is, he was getting, I can guarantee you this guy was getting kickbacks. He was up in Boston every other weekend. How long did That's he last? Then? unethical. He's still there. He's still but there. But you know what? My manager, my immediate manager, who had to call me in the office with HR and have me written up and do all this stuff, I sat there and I looked at him and I said, really, dude? Really? I said, how come I'm getting written up but I was never talked to? How come you never came to me and said you're unhappy with me? You never, I, all of a sudden I'm getting written up? I said, this is a joke. I said, I'll sign your paper. I don't give a damn. I'll sign your paper. Do you know within, with, I, I have one friend that's still working there. He and everybody else gone. This guy fired them all. He even fired the guy that brought him in there. Holy shit. He's the fucking well, obviously, there are some, there are some bad managers. There are some bad CIOs well, uh, and CFOs. Look, but, but, but the two of them in my life, I've been doing IT for 20 years. The two in my life that I've had trouble with are both high-end ex-military dudes that's all i'm saying coincidence hey, you know sometimes you know they call it the peter principle 
And uh, these guys rise to uh, a point where they're not qualified anymore. No, you know what? I have been. I have worked with a lot of people who have, were uh, who are like that Peter Principle. And you know what they typically do? They'll 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 take oh, your I'll ideas and they'll steal. make them look like they're their ideas. And you know what? Fine. You want to do that? That's great. I'm here to prop you up. I'm here to make you look good. I'm just sitting but here undercutting I'm, I'm, and cheating and all the other crap that I saw those other two guys do. I'm, I'm just Not sitting accepting. here listening to all this discussion about, you know, people in the military and so on, and the only one on this panel who's ever been in the service is me. Yeah. And I got, <laughs> you know, and, and I got to tell you. Uh, 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 <laughs> I'll be right, right behind you. Uh, huh? <laughs> I'll be right behind you all the way. Right, I'm exactly. not going to fight. <laughs> you know, and, and, and what I'm sick and tired of is people like the Trumps of the world who've never served in the military. Uh, people like talk show hosts who have never served in the military, uh, having these wonderful patriotic uh, feelings they put across, and yet they've never put their fucking ass on the line. I don't want you know. That. Hey, when I was eighteen, they 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 were dialing down the war. They weren't taking anybody new. They turned it into a volunteer army, and uh, you know, uh, regardless of the fact that my grades would have well, definitely got me uh, uh, into the front line of uh, you know in Vietnam, uh, because I you know I was the part of the class that made the top half possible, the bottom half. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, technically, I'm a Vietnam vet. Yeah. You know, because uh, 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 because uh, because the Vietnam War uh, officially got it, it went into full swing about the time I was being mustered out, but I w but because I was mustered out at that time, I was considered to be uh, a Vietnam vet. I thought you were a uh, vet of the French and Indian War. That too, that too. <laughs> hi, uh, hi, Brian. How are you? Hello. Uh, hello. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. If Brian. he would have served, he might have had a different viewpoint. Well, I, 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 well I, I don't know. You know, I mean, I can't say that I have a different viewpoint because I, uh, uh, because I, I, you know, served or whatever. Uh, but uh, I can't say I had a different <laughs> viewpoint. But, uh, you know, I mean, the fact is that I... I served in the military, and I know what it's like to serve in the military. Obviously, I didn't do it in a way that was dangerous. I mean, there's not much danger in being in a building off of Santa Monica Boulevard. Sounds uh, good. To and uh, what? I would take the building in Santa Monica. Well, so. look, you know, let's be very honest about it. While I was on duty. Uh, no enemy planes ever crossed Santa Monica Boulevard, and I think I did my job. Okay, but it wasn't very lasting. Yeah. Now we're looking at atomic bombs being levied from North Korea uh, yeah. on, uh, on Los Angeles. You know, now he's got ICBM yeah. that can reach L.A. Well, I'm not in the military any longer, but it wouldn't happen on my watch. <laughs> That's right. You know? Yeah, and I, you know, Give him hell. And, what kind of watch did you I'll tell you, have I'll tell you what, though, this is a strange part about it. you. Say, well, okay, so you were with the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service on McCadden, uh, McCadden <clears throat> Street in Hollywood, right? All right, off of Santa Monica Boulevard, and uh, you spent your entire two years of of the Navy there because I had two years in the Navy because I was Navy Reserve, but Navy Reserve served two two years where Army. Reserve only served six months. But uh, the reason I did it was you did the two years and then you never had to go to those fucking stupid meetings once a week, you know. Um, uh, but uh, uh, I, was, I was in the military uh, there. And the fact was that if you say that it wasn't a dangerous profession, because I was broadcasting from Hollywood and we were going by short wave into Asia, okay, there was a price on my head in China that I was considered to be an American propagandist. And so anybody who broadcasts with Armed Forces Radio and Television Service was considered an enemy of the Chinese people. And uh, if we ever were caught, you know, we could be shot or whatever. No I mean, fortune cookie for you. Alex, did you do and now we did your news? What did you do? I, I did news every hour. Uh, I would go in with this bunch of news, read it for five minutes, 
And that was it. I and I would. Uh, they used to have these transcribed shows. They would send out, like you know, you and your insurance and things like that, that they'd play on ships and on armed forces radio uh, stations. Okay, and uh, uh, I'd occasionally do the announcing or the intros on some of those, uh, and uh, that was. But that. But I, basically, I did newscasts. Alex, that did commercial you ever- free. Yes, of course. Did you ever have a newscast that stands out in your mind even today that was a, a monumental event? Uh, no, that, I remember. I remember to... a monumental uh, thing that happened to me when I was doing the news, mm-hmm. uh, and this was going worldwide. I mean, we were called, uh, you know, the Worldwide Armed Forces Radio and Television Service Network went out into the Pacific. That was for damn sure by shortwave. Uh, and, and were heard in a lot of parts of the world, and I was doing my five-minute newscast, and somehow during the first 30 seconds, I got a case of the giggles, which didn't stop for the next four and a half minutes. <laughs> and I thought, you know, they're going to point me up against a wall and shoot me for this. And I walked out, and just somebody <clears throat> looked at me and went, that was terrific. What was it that caused you to get the giggles? I can't remember, you know? Um yeah. I mean, there are, uh, I think maybe it was a, could have been one of the other guys who just looked funny at me while I was doing the news, and that was enough to set me off. You know, it, you, I, I've never, ever broken up doing a radio program. I've never started laughing and giggling in the middle of a radio program because the radio programs I do, it, I can laugh. I'm allowed to. Like here, if I go ha 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 and I laugh at somebody, you know. But when you're doing a newscast, you're supposed to be serious. And when you, uh, the uh, other time I broke up a lot was I was working a good music station in Sacramento, California, you know, where you went in the air everywhere over Sacramento. It's good music, KGMS. And, oh, uh, God. And, and when you have to do that, and, and you have to do some stuff live, and you have to have that serious tone, and then somebody starts giving you a funny look, you, you know, you're going to break up because it's inappropriate to break up. So when you're doing a newscast, it's very simple, very easy to break up. Doing this, I never break up because I'm, what's the break up? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh when I feel like laughing. What's happening the only to jokes Brian you get are the ones that I throw out there, and of course you don't laugh. <laughs> We're losing Brian a lot tonight. He's got some kind of uh, what do you have? Some kind of problem, Brian, with your with your? No, nah, I turned out the video there. Well, the first time was uh, Skype updating without my oh, consent. Yeah, at least turn at that. Least on, everybody, now. I suggest if you have Skype, go up there and turn. It's under Tools and other or whatever. Just turn mm-hmm. off automatic updates because okay. that will drive you nuts. Uh, uh, yes, my the second time I'll admit yeah. I had to uh, yeah. had to pick my nose, so I didn't uh, want you to see that. Well, I just do I I just do it any any time I can. Was the guy sitting there behind the window doing like this to you? No, it wasn't that. It was just you know, was just a look. You know, I mean, what what year? Anything? What year were you up here in Sacramento? I was up in the I was in Sacramento. Uh, let me see here. That would have to be, oh, God, you know, it was right after I got out of the military. I had been working for these guys in Modesto, California, and they hired me to come to work in uh, Sacramento at what was KGMS, which stood for Good Music Station. Boy, they stayed up all night thinking of those call letters. And uh, uh, and and so it, that had to be... God, uh, like 60, 65, 66, somewhere around in there. Yeah. And then I went to uh, Houston, Texas, I think maybe in 67, uh, uh, probably 66 or 67. I, You know, the, I, these dates, I forget. You know, uh, um, Jack, the passing, Jack could probably call me, uh, call me up and tell me when I started working in So you missed in the Houston. summer of love? You, you missed the summer of uh, love. Oh no, I was, I was I was in New York by the time that happened. Yeah, no, I was in New York, but I, I, I had, you know, I missed the summer of love, and I don't really don't give a shit uh, because 
quite frankly, all that stuff with flowers in your hair and that bullshit bothered me. I liked what I was doing in New York where I was with the radical leftists mm. who were like blowing up houses next to Dustin Hoffman's home. You know, what? that kind of shit. You know, we're making what some real trouble. Woodstock, 68? Woodstock would have to be... 69, wasn't it? Yeah, 69. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, 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 you know, I, I, um, you know, that you, what did they do with, uh, with American graffiti? What was the slogan there? Where were you in, was it 62? Six, was it 62? Yeah. Yeah. And it takes place in Modesto, California. You know where I was in 62? Modesto, California. Modesto, California. Uh, I was doing my show in Modesto. Too and, bad it was a movie. Huh? <laughs> Too well, bad it was a movie. Well, that was also where uh, uh, John, uh, George Lucas was growing up. That's why he wrote American Graffiti about did, Modesto. Did they used to cruise the boulevard like that in uh, in those days? Uh, yeah. I don't remember whether they did or they didn't. The oh, street, sure the, they the did. street they used yeah. in the movie, they used two streets. They, they, they used San Rafael, 4th Street, and San Rafael was one of the streets when they made the movie. But... Yeah. After two nights of shooting, San Rafael threw them out and said, we don't want you making the movie anymore here. So, I knew Mel so, Weiss. So they went up. Will you let me finish telling the story? So you learn, stick with me and learn something. So then they oh, went uh, So they went up to Petaluma and finished it in Petaluma. So half the streets in that film is 4th Street in San Rafael, and the other half is, uh, is Petaluma. Wow. Yeah. Now, what were you going to say about somebody we don't even know of? Mel Weiss owned Mel's Diner, oh. and they used the Mel's Diner uh, that was on Van Ness yeah. uh, also in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and yeah. they also used Tamil Pius High School as the high school yeah. in that movie. So. Yeah. Anyway. But, you know, and Mel's Diner down on Van Ness yeah. is gone, but yeah. now they've got little diners all yeah. over the place that have been sold out and franchised. Yeah. <clears throat> and actually, no, actually, they didn't use Mel's Diner in San Francisco. You're wrong. They went down into the valley, and they found a diner, and they just made it up to look like Mel's. Really? Yes. Because that kind of diner, you know, the kind of place you would go, and you, you would have the, you know, the... This is with the car hops. With the car hops and all of that, and it was kind of a circle, and all the cars would park around it and so on. Uh, Mel's in San Francisco wasn't that way. So Mel's so, used to. So they use went their down, they went down, I think, not into Modesto, but they went somewhere below Modesto and they found a location and then they kind of decorated it to look like Mel's. Well, that, that's that's there. interesting because uh, that Mel's Diner, they used to advertise. You're talking about the Mel's Diner own, on Geary Street, right? No, I'm talking about the one on uh, Van Ness and 12th, uh, south, you know, just before you go to. I, I, I the, don't think that was the one they used. I heard that they used the one down in the valley somewhere. Wasn't hmm. that where Scott Peterson killed his wife, Modesto? Uh, uh, he, yeah, he lived in Modesto. I don't know if he killed her there. He dumped her body in the bay. Boy, I, I, only, I hardly remember that case. What was that case again? I covered that, case. that case. 2004 was when the verdict was reached that he was yeah. guilty. It, I, I, I was, court TV. I was well, wait a minute. Now, Scott Peterson, explain, it, remind me of it because I, I know the name and I remember there was a murder, but I don't remember the particulars. And Rob would be the guy to tell us because he worked at the I court TV. I know all the particulars. I was on no, that case. You, were, you mean you were a, a juror? No, no, I was an investigator. I helped, I helped, I had to die, I had to go out into the marsh uh, to collect evidence. Did you uh, see the body, Phil? Uh, no, they had already recovered the body of the baby, and that was the one I was working on because that was in the marsh that uh, was actually, uh, had something to do with Richmond. Okay, well, listen, was for, those people, Peterson, for, those people, for those people, right. for, yeah. for those people who are listening to us right now who don't know what the fuck we're talking about, would you explain that case? One of you, you want me? Uh, well, Rob okay. covered it, so maybe Rob nah, should. I would, I, see that one doesn't stick with me for some reason. Oh really? I can't. I, I remember it, but I can't. I can't really. Okay, so you tell the story, up. Phil. Scott Peterson uh, was having an affair, and uh, he wanted a divorce, but he didn't want to lose his house and his money and his possessions. So he ended up killing his uh, wife, uh, Lacey Peterson, and, and the un unborn baby. 
and he took he took the wife he uh, brought her out to the bay and it was a big manhunt and and things like that and it was just like OJ where he was playing golf when, uh, you know when they came to get him Scott Peterson made it yeah. seem like it was a missing persons case and then he right. was on well currently he's serving time in San Quentin <clears throat> uh, you know and he'll probably never get out but uh, when he dumped the, the wife and the baby, eventually uh, the, the body bloated and the baby came out and uh, the, the wife's body was found first. But the baby actually floated into the marsh uh, and uh, it was discovered by a jogger. Uh, but uh, um, now, was she pregnant when he killed her or was the yes, the, and so the, pregnant, so the baby though. expelled itself from the dead woman's body? Yes. Uh, you know, while in the water. Yeah, they, they, I thought I heard on the news that uh, they had, uh, when they found Lacey Peterson's body that was all pruned and whatnot, that it had pruned so badly from all the water yeah. that uh, she was decapitated from it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh, you know, I was on the boat where they were dragging the sonar uh, <clears throat> uh, lines to try to, to try to find the body originally. So, <clears throat> Because I was on the boat at the time, and we used to uh, we, we had to dra uh, drag the line. They, these sonar uh, things they they're connected with a cable, and you try to see if there's anything on the bottom. Well, what so, what the about, who uh, found uh, the body? That would give me nightmares. The, for months. So they wow. they found him guilty, and he was sentenced to what? Life in life prison. In prison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was that before there was a death penalty again? And you know, there still uh, there was a death penalty at the time in California. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not even sure if he's got a, if he's on death row or not. But uh, doesn't really mean much. It doesn't in California. matter if you're in death row or not. I have a, fr a guy I know on death row. Used to call my radio show, uh, and uh, God, that was on my radio show, and that. I ended my radio show 20 years ago, so it looks like I think he's been on death row for 25 years now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just not wow. executing them anymore. That's why I don't believe in the death penalty either. Well, I it's mean, you know. Just, uh, that's a whole other bag of water. Uh, Rose Bird was probably the one that kind of upset that in California. She was appointed by Jerry Brown as, uh, as a California Supreme Court justice, and she uh, stayed the death penalty, but was later recalled. No, but the death penalty is still in force in California. It's just they're not doing it. Right. You know. And even when it is in force, you have appeal after appeal after appeal, money after well, money. Well, I mean, this guy has been going, I would, drained, say, I would so. say, easily for 25 years now. Every, every time you uh, have a one that they're actually going to go through with it, mm -hmm. then you get a drug company that comes in and says that they don't want them to use their drug, or they, uh, you know, there's well, some. Well, that's some only other... re that's only recently if that's been happening. Well, they yeah, said that's they the newest. Uh... They don't want to do it, and they can't find doctors to do it because they take an oath not to harm people. Uh, so you know, they fi they're finding it increasingly difficult to execute people. But the point mm -hmm. is. What I had going on was there was going to be an execution in California, and I got a call from somebody who knew the guy was going to be executed. And he called me and he said, I've talked to him, and he wants to call you from his waiting cell before the execution. Oh, shit. And I, I can't remember the guy's name now, but it was a very famous case, and everybody was waiting on tender hooks with this thing because this was going to be one of the rare executions that were taking place back in that time. In fact, I think maybe he was the <coughs> first guy to get executed after the death penalty was reinstated. And so they told me, the guy told me, he said he gets a, a phone in his cell and he can call anywhere to anybody he wants to using that phone because he's going to be executed, you know, that day or the next day. And uh, I've talked to him and he's going to call you on your morning show. So I'm thinking, this is going to be, this is this is news. I mean, I'm, I'm going to make the news with this thing. Our ratings will go right up. Guy couldn't get through, right? <laughs> uh, uh, it no, it was, it was better than that. Yeah. He, he, he could, no, he couldn't get through, and there was a reason why he couldn't get through. So I waited, hoping it was going to happen, happen. I was waiting for the phone call. The show's over at 10, and nothing happened, and I'm going, what the fuck happened? This guy who's a friend of his calls me and says, let me tell you what happened. He was starting to make the phone call to you. And a guard said to him, who are you calling? 
And he said, I'm calling Alex Bennett over at Live 105. And they said, oh, no, you're not. And they pulled the plug out of the phone. Wow. <laughs> because they hated me at San Quentin. And there was a reason why they hated me at San Quentin, because I was so much against the death penalty that I was uh, railing against them. Egotistical, cocksucking, exactly. semen slurping, ladder climbing, it, it, bureaucratic it, fuck face. It, it, that's right. You tell them. <laughs> I wish I had had you there at the moment to tell them that, uh, Brian. Uh, but they, they believe uh, me, I would have. They, I'd have they, gone right up to his face and shook my finger right in his fucking face. Yeah, they had. You worked for us, cocksucker. And I can't remember what it was like exactly. I, I did. You're on our dime. I did something, and I can't remember what it was that really pissed off San Quentin. Uh, and, and in fact, they even got a hold of the radio station. I'm trying to remember what the thing was now, where they actually got a hold of the radio station and said, "You shouldn't let Alex Bennett do that." And it was something regarding either executions. It probably did executed. you go to a rally or something, uh, if I remember right, at San Quentin? To, uh, no, no, that the, was that was uh, when I was really younger. Okay, and I was yeah. working at KTIM in San Rafael. We had little <laughs> things that were called Mohawk tape recorders. Do you remember yeah. these things, Rob? Maybe. Uh, that's they, before th me. These were the smallest recorders made at the time, so you could just carry it with you. You know, Remember the, it was and and get good quality, and so I took it out there, and there was there, there was going to be this uh, what what Brian? I just before I forget, I thought when you said that uh, phone call when he when he had the phone, he was going to make the call in the guard, and then sperm slurping guard said, "Oh, who are you calling?" You know, if I'd have been if I'd have been the inmate, it, you know, because he's going to die anyway, I would have said something snarky like, uh, uh, "You're, uh, I'm just calling your, I'm just calling your mother. She says her." Uh, she says, uh, she, she says her uh, her coochie misses my uh, ten inch purple headed warrior. <laughs> None of your fucking business, ass white. Anyway, Carol, I don't know if you know the story of Carol Chessman. But I would have said Carol. Yeah, yeah Carol, Carol Chessman. Chessman was known as the Red Light Bandit, uh, and and there was never a murder in these cases. But so, in L.A., there was some guy going around, and he would put a, like a red cloth in front of you know those lights you used to have on the cars. That you that you could run it right, kind of aim them from the inside. Spotlight. Spotlights, yeah. They and and he, he they would put the red thing on it so it looked like a police light, and then they would pull up behind people and then they would take them out and rob them. Okay, so in this one case they robbed them and uh, they uh, they took this woman and they <clears throat> moved her from one place to another, and I think they may have raped her. I can't remember whether they raped her or not, but eventually they arrested Carol Chessman. And Chessman claims he never did it, but he got convicted of doing it, and he got the death penalty because why? In those Just, days, if you were kid, if you kidnapped somebody, you could get the death penalty. They thought that would stop kidnapping. All it did was make people shoot the person they were kidnapping and kill them so they would never be able to identify them. But they thought that that was a good idea. And so he got convicted under that law. And he, yeah, and he had a lot of, uh, he went through a lot of legal maneuvering and he, it was one uh, thing after another. Is it really important, Mike, before I finish this no, story? No, 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 oh, okay. go ahead, go ahead, finish it. Uh, go ahead, finish and, it. And, and so he, he, wrote, he wrote several books on the subject of being on death row. And one of them was made into a movie. And he was still waiting on death row to be executed. And the night before one of these executions, and it looked like this time they were going to get him, um, uh, there were t just hundreds of people outside the gates of San Quentin protesting. And was Reagan governor then? What? Was Reagan no, the governor? No, then? no, no. This is way before Reagan. Uh, this is this back. I'm. I'm. It was like I was eighteen, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? be Pat uh, Brown probably, but uh, yeah, it might have been yeah. Brown. I don't know. But anyway, uh, uh, and uh, I that it was there and then that I got my only interview with Marlon Brando, because Brando showed up to protest, and as he walked by, I stuck my mic out and I said, uh, "Mr. Brando, could we talk with you?" And he said, "No." That was my interview <laughs> with Marlon Brando. Um, <laughs> 
and, and, and I remember interviewing one person and, and saying, what do you think about what's going on? And they said, well, I believe in an eye and an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So why don't we just rob and rape him and let him go? <laughs> you know. Yes, Mike. You know, the one case always reminds me, oh, they, they never solved it, was the Zodiac Killer. They never caught the guy. They never know who this guy is. He moved to New York. He became a disc jockey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, no. It always fascinated me. Whatever happened to him? Well, 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 well why he didn't, probably uh, died. He probably died. Probably. Well, if yeah. you have time, maybe you can go check on that one for us, Mike. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, so Carol Chessman was a big. He was a big cause celebrity, and they did execute him the next day. They finally. In those days, they did the cyanide thing, and it was uh, that was that was one of the, one of the early times of me trying to figure out how you go out on a story and get one, you know, and uh, uh, so that was you know that was the that was That's my big my, my big time with uh, with Marlon Brando, but he showed you're up. Guilty, you don't deserve a quick death. What you're innocent. What? I said if you're guilty, you don't deserve to die right away and if you're and if you're innocent you know because there's been cases of people being wrongfully convicted especially in the wonderful state of texas um if you're in it if you're innocent then you have all they have all the time in the world to cross check and recross check themselves to make sure they didn't make well, a mistake and it, if they it, found out they yeah. made a mistake then they can do well, he, he, here's, here's what i always said about the death penalty if you can tell me without equivocation 100 percent that nobody who was innocent ever got executed, then I'll say, okay, maybe you can make a case for, for, for the death penalty. But if even one person who was innocent was executed as a result, then the whole thing's wrong. Then we, exactly. can't, we can't take a chance on that. And that's why I'm, that's my argument against the death that's penalty. That's mine too. But you know, there's that other alternative, you know, people who are the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth for your argument was good. You know, let's just rape and kill. Let's just rape and kidnap the guy and let him go. Or, you know, um, he doesn't deserve a quick death. Camarati's code says the punishment must fit the crime. And that's what Lex Talianus is. And it's also loosely translated yeah, well, as an eye I, for an I, eye. I don't give a shit about that. Uh, Patrick. You know, I, I just said you did. The death penalty. What? I used to support the death penalty. So did I. And you were in, I did a paper on it in college and read about some of the mistakes that were made, uh, some of the uh, natural sponges that weren't wet enough, people burning to death, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And Three miles. It, it, changed, it changed my perspective. However, um, the, the one thing that frustrates me with our legal system is life imprisonment should be you'd fucking die there, not 25 years to life, and then you might get paroled. When you get convicted for life, you die there. That, that your, that's your home until you take your last breath. Period. What about if what about if you're innocent though, and somebody can prove you innocent? Yeah, absolutely, but that goes with any that could go with a, a minor drug. What charge. you're what you're saying is you, you don't want to see a death uh, a, a life sentence, and you can be paroled in twenty years. Right. You, like you want to you want. Yeah. yeah. There shouldn't be any parole bullshit with him. You know, I mean, yeah. fucking die in prison. Yeah. I even had issues with that, but yes, Rob's, uh, Rob's got his hand up. Rob. Well, and I do. I have an issue with that, and it's 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 about rehabilitation. And if you don't give people the ability to pot or even the hope that they could get out, then what's to stop them? What's to stop complete and utter chaos in the prison system? You can't treat people like animals. I don't care if they're criminals or not. They're they're still human beings, and you can't. What what are you doing in behind those walls? You know what I'm saying? How do how do you? It just doesn't seem right. They're still human beings, and just because they killed somebody, which is horrible, I just you know I just can't see throwing them away and not you know like they say oh they have television. Well, what do you expect people you incarcerate to do? They give them something to do. They come on, really? 
let them sit and rot. Really? 24 hours a day, yeah, seven I days disagree. a week. No windows. Yeah, and then if they're found innocent, they're already insane because they have nothing to pass the time right. with. So right. you've made an innocent man well, suffer a fate worse you, than you death. Know, we, 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 only, we only have one life to live. You know what I just thought about? Well, well, yes, yes, Tony. I mean, Trump. When they're in jail in the summer, they're probably better than me in work. <laughs> <laughs> In the winter, they're probably better off than you would work. They probably got sent to I bet you. They can't be fighting all no fucking Some of those prisons in Florida are pretty bad. Well, you know? here, 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 here's the point. Um, I see all the time, just like you do, stories of people who've been in prison for 20, 30 years on a crime they didn't commit, and then the DNA evidence comes along and shows they didn't do it. We only have one life to lead. And these guys are now getting out at 50. They've spent 30 years, 40 years in prison. They'll never and, get it back. And they're finally exonerated. And they'll never get it back. They will never get it back. And they're scarred. You, you think with and, DNA and, and, evidence and, and, uh, 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 that most, you think with the DNA evidence that we have today and the ways that they can process it, that uh, most of those people that were wrongfully convicted have been overturned. Let me not abuse your cop sensibility, but the fact is the police for the longest time, especially back in the day, used to actually, especially, and, and district attorneys, used to basically frame people so they have another notch on their belt. And, and, and we, we've had a lot of cases where district attorneys just simply wanted to see somebody either executed or whatever to Especially if, skin if, is dark. because because well, let me finish because these are reelected uh, officials who go yeah, who yeah. are up for yeah. election and I often felt that if a district attorney sent somebody to his death knowing that he was innocent and you can prove that then he should be given the death penalty oh, I, I think that I a, agree with no yeah. argument here. There have been uh, district attorneys that uh, were uh, 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 not convicted, or they were prosecuted uh, because they knew that they were uh, prosecuting an innocent person. But uh, did you see that uh, body cam video from Baltimore last week, where uh, the one cops? Yeah, they were. They were. They were. They were. They were yeah. They were, yeah, saw the other cop planting evidence. The guy had a body. This is how stupid this cop was. He had a body <laughs> cam on him, and they have a video of him planting the evidence. He literally, his <laughs> hands going down and throwing it into a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, now, and now the Baltimore police now are under fire. You got to have that camera on at all times, regardless. I mean, they're getting a lot of pressure for that, too. Yeah, well, I mean, but the fact is, this guy was stupid enough to not yeah. think, "Oh, I got a body cam on me." You know, I Jeez, think I think people who do I think people who do things like that deserve worse punishment yeah, than those who did the crime. You take like Joe Paterno, for example. Oh yeah, and his Sandusky. Sandusky was a sick individual. This guy is fucked up in the head, right? What he did, right? This is horrible. Now, but he's sick. He's got a he's got a, whether he was abused as a kid, whatever it is, anybody who knew that that was going on. But for that fucking Penn State and all their bullshit, let that go on. I could kill those motherfuckers because that's worse. There's somebody who is mired in sickness. OK, they're sick. But if you can just sit back and watch innocent kids, to me, that's death penalty shit. No you, want, you, want, you, want, you want another That's good one? How about how about that uh, that rugby team? Where was it in uh, uh, Virginia? Something Virginia? or North Carolina? Yeah, where the uh, they they were holding a party and they hired some strippers to come lacrosse by. Lacrosse team in Duke. A lacrosse team in Duke. You got it. There it is. There oh, we yeah, go. They, they uh, and and these it turned out that she was lying, mm. but they literally made these guys go through hell. And when it was all over, I think she wasn't even arrested for it. Oh, you, that's just you know, and these people, and, and you go back and you talk to some of these students who were involved in that, their lives were literally ruined. I mean, because uh, 
even after they were found not guilty and that there was no you know, and, uh, scarlet letter I, I still remember al sharpton down there convicting these guys literally no, giving sure. speeches convicting them and you know to this Thanks, day al sharpton has never apologized to those guys he doesn't have to you know um, but that's another example of this sort of thing where I think that woman should have gotten like 20 years in jail for fucking these people's lives up. Absolutely. That's worse crime than the crime. Yes. Sometimes crime happens for a reason. I mean, a moment of passion, uh, a sickness. Anybody who obstructs justice to, to the, or knows that somebody is innocent or knows something is going on and they, and they don't come out and say something, to me, that's lower than the person who committed the crime. Sorry. Exactly. Exactly. So when I hear about a district attorney who jimmied up the evidence so that he could get somebody into the death chamber, I say that once they found that out, and they should have just executed the fucking district attorney because that would be a notice put other district attorneys on notice you can't do that sort of thing yes brian is in another aspect of this uh, conversation would be people who have served the time for their crime yet they're still being punished upon being released from jail or prison yeah and let me let me follow that up with a further explanation a convicted sex offender who has to register as one well he's already served his time in right. prison right if he can't be who he was before he went into that facility, then uh, he should he he should be given a life sentence if for no other reason right. than because he's uh, he or she is usually it's a he is um, you know ha has it better has a more has a is better able to support themselves or be supported in that system than you know if they're released with that scarlet letter saying that uh, they can't live within this many miles of a school or do this kind of work or do that kind of work all these yeah. restrictions he's still being punished yeah, yeah well but those folks it's been proven that they don't get better then they should stay in jail okay yeah. but you we've been joined by the way by jack bishop jack i say not jail but it should be psychiatric. Some, something, something of the sort, yes. Could, could both of you are, are right. I mean, jail is wrong for that because it, it's not fostering anything positive for them. But they shouldn't be released because yeah, Especially of if they're in general population. No, you're, not, you're right. I mean, you're putting everybody in danger, whether it be women because of serial rapists or children. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, don't put them out there. But then don't put, houses. don't don't put some asshole who is dealing, you know, a, an ounce of marijuana in jail for 10 years either. Right. You know, yeah. could, That's what Session wants to do. <laughs> oh, that asshole. He's coming to talk. Yeah. Uh, Jack, you have your finger up. Hey, this, this is your memory calling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, you went to Houston in '66. Okay, That's... because I got there in March of '67. Okay, after losing track of you for a number of years. Right. Because so I just wanted, yeah, I just want to yeah, and I and you are absolutely right about it being '66 because I got out of the military. I think. Oh, God, maybe uh, 64, end of 64, something mm -hmm. like that. And then I went to Sacramento and worked there in 65. And while I was there was when I got the job in Houston. I think about the middle of that year, uh, I got the call to come to Houston and to work at uh, KILT. Now, you were talking about being broken up on the air. Yeah. Uh, this happened to a very young me. I was filling in for the afternoon guy. Yeah. At that station. Oh, by the way, let me also add. Can I add? Uh, Vernon Nunn. Right. Vernon Nunn is joined us. Are you there, Vernon? Yeah, but I got a new camera and I can't seem to get it working. Oh, oh, just turn it on. Can you turn it on? It's blanked out on me. Uh, sometimes that happens. You, yeah, we have you, you, you might try hanging up and then calling back again. Okay. okay. And and maybe it'll work then. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll do. Yeah. That would be the first time with nine people lately that uh, somebody couldn't get a camera. Yeah. Well, it could just be some other reason though too. Could be the version of his Skype. 
Yeah. It's a brand new camera. Or uh, my other one, camera my other one died on me six months ago. Yeah. That's why I haven't been on. Have you tried toggling it on and off a couple of times? No, but he he is, blocked he, out. The, he, the toggle's blanked out. It's so. blanked out. Yeah, just hang up and, and call us right back and see if that clears it up. If it doesn't, we'll just see your picture and you can talk. Okay? All right. All righty. Uh, anyway, as you were saying, Jack. Before I was so rudely interrupted by reality, yeah. uh, uh, this happened to me in late 66. Uh, I'm working at KMPX. Yeah. We're doing the AOR format, or as we called it back then, underground. Yeah. One of the guys is dating the illustrious Carol Doda. You told this story oh. the other night on your program. Yes. Yeah. And uh, th but this happened. This happened to me. I'm filling in for the afternoon guy. Yeah. And uh, he brings Carol into the studio, and 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 we, you know, uh, KMPX Studios were on Green Street, yeah, uh, just down from uh, Broadway, and Carol flashes me. But you told the story on your show the other night. The hell with it then! If I told it already, you know, forgive me. You know, I'm no, an old I, fart. I'm just saying I... that I don't want sloppy fucking <laughs> seconds on a story. <laughs> You remember hearing it, right, Mike? It was a little bit different. You know. <laughs> Not a character story. Uh, 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 Vernon, you, uh, you're back again, but you still don't have your camera lighting up, right? Yeah, it's not. Okay, well, just jump in whenever you want to. Did anything we were talking about strike your fancy? No, I was too busy trying to get the camera going. I wasn't paying much attention. <laughs> oh, I the microphone see. is really loud. Oh, it's making a lot of noise. We were talking about the death penalty and all that, the penal system. You, have you got an air conditioner on in your room there, Vernon? Uh, no, I closed the door like I had before, but I'll see if I can change that volume. Yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, um, but where were we? Oh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so thank you for letting me know when I got to Houston because... Oh, it's my, it was my pleasure. I'm bad. Okay. Oh, Vernon, it's just too noisy. We're going to have to get rid of you, Vernon. I'm sorry. I really, uh, very sorry with that. You know. If you'd like, I'll even tell you about when you left Houston, because you left Houston before I did. It, when did I? When did I leave Houston? Uh, you left Houston. Seven. Uh, Sixty-seven. Late summer. Huh? I didn't. You didn't. You left Houston late summer of sixty-seven. Okay. All right. Go to uh, going to Chicago. Sorry, but I can't take you. No, I uh, went to Minneapolis. Mini, you're right. It was Minneapolis, uh, and I kept thinking when you did, you go from one impossible place to live in that is hot and unbearably humid to a place that's colder than a well digger's rectum. Well, and. I Naturally, it was colder than a witch's tit, and I know because I touched a witch's tit up there. And <laughs> Poor whore's heart. Uh, you know, I mean, a woman, wow, a woman in that part of the country, her nipples would get so hard she could like etch glass with them. Nice. You know, I mean, it was, it oh. was. Uh, I I remember when I would do a show, I would have to go out to the car during a commercial break a half hour before the show was over <laughs> and turn the car on. Mm -hmm. So it could warm up, so that when I got into it, it was at least not frozen. Okay. I had a friend who lived in Detroit, and it was so cold in the winters there. He actually had a heater that went on his engine. Oh no! Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, you know, so they do that in Alaska. Would, yeah, and they they would turn it on all night, and it was like I guess a wire or something, and it would it would keep the engine warm. No, it literally was a heater that would, it would heat up the engine block. Yeah, and in yeah. 1972, the oil would. You have to keep the uh, oil hot. Yeah. Yeah, he had a remote control so he could turn the car on 15, 20 minutes w without going out. Uh, turn it on first, and then uh, yeah. go out and have yeah. it warmed it up. Was, it was cold. It was so fucking cold. It was amazing. Well, I, did, I didn't do much better. And by the way, interestingly enough, Minneapolis, this liberal city, right? The most racist city I worked in. I went from Houston, Texas, which you would think is racist. But at least if you were black, you knew where you stood, right? Am I right? Yeah. 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 
You know, you knew where you could go and where you couldn't go and how you could act and how you couldn't act. You go to Minneapolis, I mean, I, a group called the Black Patrol said, we want you to see something. And they had me ride with them one night. And Plymouth Avenue, which was the main drag in the, in the ghetto area of Minneapolis, I'm sitting there and there are white guys driving down the street shooting guns out of their cars. I mean, it was the most racist fucking city I've ever been in, and this is supposed to be a liberal city. Well, you know, uh, the upper Midwest yeah. had a history of that. Yeah. It, 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 at one time, the largest Ku Klux Klan, yeah. uh, uh, Cl Claven outside of the South, yeah. was in the upper Midwest. Yeah. But uh, you go to... Minneapolis, I go to Knoxville, Tennessee to be a program director of a station there. And you know what I found in Knoxville that I had never seen? No. Snow. <laughs> it's It snows one night. I'm doing the morning show as program directors often do. Mm -hmm. And Knoxville is kind of hilly. Yeah. And I'm going... I can't drive in this shit. So, so I actually pulled my car over, called a taxi, and went to work. And spent the next couple of days trying to find somebody to teach me how to drive in snow, because I'd never seen that kind of yeah. nonsense. By the way, Vernon's back with us again. Are you there, Vernon? Yeah, I'm here. I think the noise is gone now. Yeah, the, the yeah. noise is fine. Now if we could only turn on your camera. You went and you bought a whole new camera and look at you well not <laughs> don't look at you um well mr bennett i gotta go get ready for that thing called the intersection by the way if any of you folks that are involved with the citizens panel going on right now if you'd like to continue gee, these conversations yeah, look at you first of all you you <laughs> recycle a story from your show onto my show Okay. Well, that's because you've got a bigger audience. And, and then, and then you're trying to poach my audience. Jeez, Almighty! What He's trolling for audience? No, I, 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 I really now. wish all you people and, would call and, him. And didn't I offer to absorb the ninety-five cents that you need to spend to get a music license for this now, joint? I mentioned, I mentioned the other night that I don't know the last time I looked, I could get a non-commercial kind of license for music for five hundred dollars. And you offered to pay two fifty of it. Yes. Uh, and and I tried to tell you that the the other reason why I don't get it is every time you play a record, you have to like write it down. You have to log everything. Is that and such you have a to log burden? everything? Yeah. Is that such a burden? Oh yeah. I, which I, package is the five hundred? Is it Sony? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Vernon. We can see you. Wave your hand. Yeah. Yeah. There's Vernon. We can yeah. see him now. Yeah. Hey, I finally figured it out. That's a pretty cool camera you got there. That's nice. Thank you. It's a Logitech. Yeah, that's what I've got here. But that's anyway, so, so all I'm saying is that uh, um, uh, you have to write every. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll look the stuff up. You know, if if, if you know, if, I looked at it. And, and, and he he wants to do it so he can play a piece of music as his theme song. That I've been playing for thirty years. Fuck you very much. I look at it as a dollar a day. Is what it was going to cost me. It, to play that record. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, you know, I mean, we could do music shows here. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Then we'd be like everybody else. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Good night, Mr. Bennett. Good night, Mr. Bishop. Have a good show. And uh, anybody who can call him after I'm through here, do it. Because uh, he's, you know, he's interesting to talk to. I like Jack. So, Vernon. What have, what are you yes. up to? What's what's new in your life? Oh, I don't know. I'm thinking about changing states since uh, Kentucky seems to be doing more and more crap. As though it wasn't doing crap before. Well, not since uh, it wasn't before Bevin became the governor. Yeah. Now you do what down there again? I'm trying to remember. Uh, well, I'm semi-retired. I'm working part time at Home Depot. Yeah, at Home Depot. Yeah. What do you do at Home Depot part time? Tool rental. What rental? Tool. Tool, oh, tool rental. In One other of words, the six people in the big box store you can never find anybody in. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, it's funny you should the- mention that because I, I rented a hole once. Oh, wait a minute. That was a prostitute. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I guess the kind of hose I've rented in the past were back hose. I do them in the back. Really? Yeah. We- <laughs> well, we haven't heard from you in a while, uh, Vernon, but it's nice to see you again. And I guess maybe it was because you didn't like the camera you had at the time. No, it died on me. It died on you. Yeah, I came down here one night to sign into your show, and yeah. the camera was fire hot. And when I unplugged it and let it cool off, plugged it back in, I couldn't get his picture. So Really? These things don't usually get hot, though. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It was, what was it, USB, right? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Can you, uh, Rob, have you ever heard of a USB uh, device ever getting hot? Yeah. You have? Yeah, have. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. If 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 the if the wiring inside or the circuits inside get yeah. old and stuff yeah. starts happening, boy, you could have a you could have a heat problem or a fire. So what kind of Logitech did you get? This is a, a C90, I think it is. Oh, really? It sounds great. It sounds really good. Yeah, no, it looks good too. Well, I'm using I'm using a separate microphone. Oh, I was gonna say for a for a mic. Just for Phil's uh, camera, uh, I gotta I gotta expose my radio in the background. Yes. There, Phil. that's just for you. That's Can it. you use one of your D one hundred fours on the? Uh, oh, you mean like this? I've got one right here, except it's all tangled up in wires. Well, you it, well, you were the guy who did the Morse code for us, there right? Yeah, there's a D one hundred four. Yeah, they have such oh, a. Oh man. But they're analog, right? So. Yes. Yes, they are analog. What's yeah. wrong with analog, Phil? Nothing. Uh, can you use an analog uh, uh, a mic on a uh, 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 in a computer? Sure. Well, yeah, you just have yes, to have you, the right connection. Yeah, you just yeah. have to you just have to have a, a mini plug, really, that goes right in. I mean, if you want to just do it that way, what or I do is whatever. I, yeah. I, I, well, I, that that microphone has got one of the sweetest sounds of any microphone. I got an adapter right there that probably work because it has yeah. a quarter inch connection quarter on it, and there's yeah. the one that goes. Well, well, the computer. Uh, uh, what's the name of that? What's the name of that mic again? A D one hundred four. It's made by the company called Aesthetic. Oh, really? And how yeah. much do they run? Uh, On the used market, they run about a hundred bucks. D one hundred four. Really? They're not made anymore. I don't think. Oh, oh. But no, I think they're I, not. They're you not have made to anymore. Onto the key uh, to activate the sound. It, it doesn't just stay open the whole time. The whole you time. have to hear it. Oh, well, see. the one that I have has, a little, have clip, has a little so clip, so I can yeah. slide it. Wait a minute. Now, we're, now, now, for some reason, we're getting a uh, slapback slap here. Why are we getting slapback all of a sudden? There. That's better now. I heard myself. Yeah. No, you're, <laughs> you're okay. It's all right. Um, anyway, um, so uh, I guess what we were talking about, the death penalty, we, that's good. good. We got into some conversations here that we, we don't normally get into. And uh, uh, now you're almost done with your show. I just wanted to say something real quick. Yes, and that, yeah, slap back. It's uh, it's a reason why I don't think any of us on this panel uh, have or did run for political office because we really don't like to hear the sound of our own voice over and over again. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's correct. And the other reason I think we don't run for political office is we're all decent human beings, right, Patrick? Well, uh, Amy, Manuel I said wants Patrick. To run political I, I said Patrick. Oh, yes, Patrick. Patrick was throwing his voice all the way to California. No, yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. all we're all decent, right, Patrick? Uh, sure, yes. <laughs> okay, but yes, and Amy, Amy Amy's running. Is, yes, so yeah, she wants to run for political office, and she was looking for a place to get headshots for her uh, uh, pictures for her well, campaign. Well, if she's going to get elected, support. she's going to have to give headshots. Yeah, so, and so, uh, <laughs> so um, you know, I, I, I gave her a you know a suggestion, and then uh, in the next paragraph, I said I didn't know the Democrats. Uh, could uh, see themselves in photos or in the mirror, <laughs> you know. Amy was just trying to call in. Amy, we're we're getting off the air here because you got to go on the air, okay? So, anyway, hey, listen, this has been a lot of fun, guys. Uh, a fun guy, yeah. Uh, 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 Scott, thank you so much for joining us this evening, as well as Rob Alfano, the lovely Patrick Blazik. 
uh, Brian, whose last name we don't even know. Uh, and it's maybe better that way because then we don't have to go to the, we don't have to testify at the trial. Uh, Mike, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, uh, Phil, good talking to you tonight as usual. Uh, uh, Anthony, that case, great. Smith. And Vernon, call us more because you got a great looking camera now. Now I got a good camera. I'll do that. And the sound is great, and and uh, you, you make even me look lousy. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Big, uh, big, uh, big uh, goodbye. Well, yeah, wave goodbye, everybody. Thanks for being yeah. here. Yeah, there they go. Okay, that's it. That's all she wrote for the uh, for the ramble for tonight. You got uh, Amy uh, Manuel and also uh, Jack Bishop next over most of this same station. Uh, and uh, after that, connections will be here at one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. I'm Alex Bennett. Saying, as always, I'll see you on Tuesday, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.